Chrysler Corporation only made about 2.7 billion of these. The intake that fit the 318 two barrel for years and years and years had nothing to do with performance. We're working with it. To get started, we're just gonna take everything off of this intake real quick. I took pictures so I know where everything goes. Just as a quick reminder, we're gonna go ahead and kick her in high gear here and and uh, just get these vacuum hoses out of our way and and uh, go ahead and take the thermostat off and and a carburetor and we're not gonna take away the heater hole spouts, but we'll remove just about everything else, including the little emission ports and things like that and you know everything out of our way, but. Once you get it down to the to where you can handle it and see exactly where, how you want to work on it and get it cleaned up and stuff, and it just makes it better. And we'll paint her up and we'll have her looking pretty sharp and snazzy, even though it's in a van and nobody can really see it. But we'll know it's clean, and if I ever have to touch it again, I'll have clean fingers. Outside of the heat, you know, everything just went really well. It's hot out here this weekend, but that's okay. That's all right. I'll be in the air condition soon enough, and that's that's where I really like to, to work on them is right in the AC. That always helps everything. We got her tore down, regardless of how hot it is out here. I just used a three-quarter inch deep well socket and a breaker bar and I I uh, broke this here loose inside here and I just want to show you so it's all part of the EGR system and it's a big old I don't know if I can see, let you see down there or not but there's a there we go it's a large hole down there and them things build up carbon all over inside there and then this one here, a lot of people don't realize, but there's a hole in this one too at the bottom. It's not plugged. They're not plugged. Most of your air is at the top of your runners, but you get, I'm sure you still get vacuum pulling through here and it pulls from them exhaust. You got the one exhaust, you got the one exhaust valve that pulls through here and uh, it's got the two holes in the port and one goes to here and comes up through here and just to me they're carbon traps and build up carbon is all they do I'm not sure they did anything for for anything else most of the work that we're gonna do on this first of all it's gonna be inside an air conditioner but, but it's gonna be right here we're gonna focus on this right here this area we're gonna start out here though with our four inch grinder just tear into it And you know the object here is just to take down that center divider some and uh, uh, I'm going to kind of try to give a little bit more access to both barrels of the carburetor. Um, but yeah, you, you'll see here in a minute here what I'm doing. And I'm just going to use that punch just to knock out the the what I what I sliced inside there. I, I sliced it really thin, so it was really weak, and I just the casting just snaps right off like nothing to it. So that's all I'm doing here. Yeah. 
And after you uh, knock out those little pieces in the center there that I sliced, I, a guy kind of surmises it and sees a little bit more that he wants to do. So I'm just stepping in there and just doing a little bit of touch-up work there and and uh, no biggie. Now the rest I'll do in house with Dremel. I'll explain to you what my thought process is. It's okay if you don't understand. A lot of people don't understand my thought process. I kind of go off sometimes. What we're trying to accomplish here is, even though it has a about a quarter inch carb gasket uh, spacer there, I'm gonna cut this and smooth this off now with the Dremel. And I went down almost a half inch, not quite, maybe three eight, maybe three eighths. And this will allow, because the carb is so small, CFM wise, the BBDs, it'll allow each side to have better access to the other barrel. And even though that this was probably good for low end torque, at some point I gotta have a little something, you know, once you hit 3,500 RPMs, maybe even 4,000, a little more CFMs there. And that's the object. And then I'm gonna cut away in here on this underside, this is a straight down lip, and it just a, it's a 90 degree angle. I'm gonna I'm gonna curve this underneath here because most of your 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 flow and pressure is gonna be in the top of your runner. So I'm gonna make that transition up to the carb more rounded instead of a square. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. So I'm gonna get busy. I got my Dremel, and I'll show you the work when I'm done. So here's the finished product with this. So what it looks like. I just dolled all, rounded all the edges under the underside and up here and this gap here that I created. So again, just looking for a, a smooth transition without turbulence. That's all I can really ask for on an intake like this. I mean, I'm not going to pay to have it extrude honed. I mean, you know. So this pretty much concludes what I'm going to do to the intake. This is where I wanted to focus most of my work in. Just trying to get a little bit more CFM opportunity for all cylinders, right? All cylinders alike, fair. I don't know, what more can you do, guys? Project continues on. Sure appreciate you joining in. Till next time.